Now, the Artemis statues in the Ephesian Museum are huge, but what if an ancient Ephesian family wanted one for their home? Or maybe they were on the go and needed a pocket sized Artemis to carry around with them. Well, to meet that demand, an industry developed in the first century totally dedicated to the crafting of smaller Artemis miniatures. They were crafted by local sculptors whose living it was to make the mini idols. You know, selling Artemis dolls has always been a cash cow for ancient Ephesus. The interesting thing is, they're still selling them. No one, of course, really worships Artemis anymore, although you can find the occasional kooky website. But industries die hard, whether they're fueled by devotion or dollars. The Apostle Paul learned this the hard way when he brought the message of Christianity up the Akkadian Way into the city of Ephesus in the early 50s AD. As is recorded in the book of Acts, Paul almost destroyed the trade in Artemis statues, but not without it almost destroying him. Now, if you come to the ancient city of Ephesus today, you will probably notice dozens of merchants all around the old city selling little Artemis trinkets, little idols. Artemis, who was later called Diana by the ancient Romans. Now, the documents of the New Testament provide a glimpse into how old that craft is and how high the passions ran when it came to the worship of Diana and her temple here in Ephesus. The Apostle Paul came to Ephesus preaching Christianity and the one true God, and it didn't include Diana. And that got him in trouble with the locals. He was even accused of attacking the local trade in Diana icons. According to the 19th chapter of Acts, a local silversmith named Demetrius, who built the small silver Artemis shrines, gathered his fellow craftsmen and said this. Men, you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people saying that gods made with hands are not gods. And there is danger not only that this trade of ours may come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be counted as nothing, and that she may even be deposed from her magnificence, she whom all Asia and the world worship the threatened Ephesians began to literally lose it. As a riot broke out, they immediately scrambled to find and kill Paul. Unable to find him, they seized his two travel companions, Gaius and Aristarchus. His companions were dragged from the local marketplace into this amphitheater where they were surrounded for two hours by ecstatic, chanting Ephesians, screaming, great is Diana of the Ephesians. They barely made it out of here alive. Imagine the horror of being surrounded by a frenzied mob of worshipers who were turning angrier by the minute. According to Acts 19, Paul tried to come into the theater to address the crowd, but his fellow Christians knew the mob would tear him limb from limb and forced him to stay outside the amphitheater. Finally, a town clerk of Ephesus came in and calmed down the rioters. Not long after, Paul, who had narrowly escaped his own lynching, left Ephesus to pursue missionary work in other regions. But he left it with a healthy Ephesian church, firmly established. Paul kept in close contact with that church. One of his most treasured letters to them is preserved in the New Testament, the letter to the Ephesians. And whatever became of the thriving temple worship of Artemis, I think by the remains we can tell how she fared over the subsequent years after Paul left.